haven't had any problems with the tractor. I've got approximately 20 hours on it. Um, one thing I noticed between this tractor and my old tractor, uh, which was also a Massey Ferguson, uh, is the bucket is actually constructed a lot better. Um, it has a lot beefier top ridge, and this rear, or the lower uh, blade section is actually really uh, high carbon, uh, nice cutting surface. And, and I've beat this thing on, on rocks and gravel, and it really um, has taken the abuse well. Um, and other than missing some paint, it looks brand new. Uh, they really did a real big improvement on the back hose on these as well. Um, I believe the model that I had before was a 1250. Um, and I had a, a little bit larger bucket, but um, it had weld on teeth. This, these new uh, back hose, this particular one is a CB65 in the front end loader is a DL95 but these are bolt on, bolt on teeth and they're really well mounted um, you know I've pulled against roots and other things the things that would have bent the old tractor uh, I had to weld on several teeth uh, these don't move at all uh, the buckets a little thicker as well um, I really like the uh, recessed grease fittings that they put on these now. Uh, it keeps you from banging things up. Uh, most of the hydraulic hoses are actually inside of the uh, structure and the same on the backhoe. Um, I didn't have that before. I, I, I don't know that I ever had any problems with the backhoe, but I was really cautious. Uh, but the fr old front end loader on that 1250, uh, I know that I pulled the, the hydraulic hoses out a couple of times getting it hung on stuff. I did not get the mowing deck However, uh, these come equipped with all of the attachments uh, for the mowing deck. Um, I believe they even make a drive-on mowing deck now as well. I believe the, the older version that does fit this unit, um, this is a GC1720. Um, but I think the older units, uh, actually you had to slide them underneath. Uh, but these are drive-on. They don't have uh, the John Deere Quick Connect PTO, but it looks relatively trivial to get it hooked up. Uh, just to go over the controls a little bit, uh, this is actually your brake. This is your diff lock. This locks your parking brake. You mash the pedal down and lock the parking brake here. All of your lighting controls, with the exception of the work light, um, which has its own switch on the light. Um, over on this side, all the, co the controls are color coded. Uh, so anything dealing with the PTO is going to be yellow. Um, anything dealing with the drive system is going to be orange. And anything dealing with the three points is going to be gray. Um, and it's pretty conventional like a normal tractor. It does have independent PTO. Uh, so you can decide when you want the PTO on. And if it's on, it's on whether you are stopped or, or moving. Uh, which is a really nice feature, especially when you're bush hogging. Uh, it does have a cup holder. Works really well. Uh, the seat belt's really easy to grab a hold of. Um, I'm not particularly a fan of the, the rotating seat. You really have to get a knack for how to reliably. It's a, I've noticed it's a lot harder to get up and get turned around than to actually go back to the normal driving position. Um, but I've gotten used to it. It's, it's not too big of a deal to uh, switch over to the backhoe. Um, going around the back, the operation of the controls is uh, this lever actually releases to go into backhoe mode and it will actually rise up and clip onto this. And this is the release to go back into the other position. Over on the driver's uh, control area, uh, you basically have a uh, control for your three point. Um, this isn't a position control type tractor. Uh, this is up and down. You do have control of the speed that it lets the implement down by turning this knob. Um, and that works fairly well. I've gotten used to it doing uh, box blading and, and I really haven't found it to be an issue. Uh, the four wheel drive lever is here and your forward, uh, or not, sorry, your high and low speed controls are here on this side. And uh, the tractor won't start unless you're actually in neutral. So always keep that in mind. Um, you really have to be mindful to always set the parking brake. Um, over on this side, this small little connector here is actually your 
cruise control. Your starter switch is here. Um, this is your throttle. Um, and then your loader control is actually integrated into the, into the cab. There's no exposed uh, hydraulic fittings. Um, this does have float. You do really have to snap this forward. Um, it's not as much of a pressure thing as it is the amount of speed that you go forward. Um, and you'll feel it'll be a definite dent tent pop and the loader bucket will, will go into float mode. We'll go to the backhoe controls real quick. Um, they're really simple. Um, this is one of the smoothest operating backhoes that I've ever operated that are on a tractor. Um, it's really similar to pilot controlled excavator. Um, I was able to dig close to foundations uh, and not be worried at all about you know losing control of the backhoe, uh, even at high idle speeds. Um, you know, pumping a lot of uh, hydraulic fluid. Some of the nice touches they did. They have uh, holders for all the pins that go in the backhoe, and when it's in storage, um, the backhoe is really easy to take off. Uh, there's these two pins. There's an identical one on the other side. Uh, you just basically pop these out. There's storage for them in the uh, where the uh, boom actually connects to the backhoe unit, and uh, it takes maybe eight minutes. I think I timed myself uh, the last time that I removed this. Um, comes on off really easy. Uh, you do not have to remove any of your three-point uh, hardware. All of it just folds up. It actually, I don't know if this is standard, but it came with a little rubber strap. Um, it does have a holder for the top link. Uh, and the hydraulic hoses, uh, you can get the uh, tractor about two feet away from the uh, uh, backhoe attachment, which is really nice for connecting. There's three hoses. Uh, my particular tractor came with little uh, color-coded tie straps. I think it was a blue and yellow and then there's a blue or a yellow hose on the other side and you just make sure that those colors go together. The red uh, one actually gets disconnected and, and capped off. It does come with caps. And it was, it's pretty obvious how, how those connect whenever you disconnect or reconnect. Um, it, does, it did come with a triangle. It has a triangle mount on the tractor. And it also has one at the backhoe. Um, if you have the backhoe on and you're gonna drive it on the road. A couple, one nice thing I like is the feet work really well. Um, the stabilizers, I would say, are much better built than what was on the previous tractor. Um, the backhoe is super powerful. It, it'll pick the whole unit up. Um, I'm sure it's not recommended, but you can definitely maneuver the entire tractor from the backhoe uh, in increments, especially if you know what you're doing. Um, the grease fittings on the backhoe are really easy to get to, too, which... Uh, really was a a, a benefit um, i think the old tractor it had zerks that actually went in uh, that were not accessible without actually cranking the unit up and moving it around this one all the zerk fittings are accessible pretty much i haven't found a position that you can't get to them okay the only two real problem areas that i've had uh, after i used the backhoe for a little bit i started noticing that the hydraulic level was getting low there's actually a hydraulic uh, sight glass. I don't know that you can see it on the video, but it'll be down here. It'll be it'll be obvious. It's really close to where your th your uh, PTO shaft comes out, um, and it it just to save you a little bit. I actually added fluid and uh, was really concerned about whether I was reading the sight glass right. Uh, the sight glass will actually be white, completely white, uh, if there's no fluid in that area. And whenever the fluid gets there, it'll kind of turn like a, a, a yellow color. Um, so make sure that you have it parked in a flat level surface. Uh, and the actual fluid fill is right here. It's really accessible. Um, a lot more accessible if you take the backhoe off, but it's not absolutely required that you do that. Uh, another problem that I had, which caused me to have to put a little bit of fluid back in the tractor. Um, and I've, I've noticed on the news groups, a lot of people have had trouble with it. Um, this particular hose fitting was actually only finger tight and it had been leaking hydraulic fluid. Um, it was real easy to find. Um, I just spot checked the other fittings and they're not leaking now. Um, but I did have to take this fitting off and actually just tighten it with some wrenches. Um, and it hasn't given me any more, any more problems. Um, the front end loader comes off really easy. Um, basically you remove these pins. Uh, your stands are here. You release those and let those down. Um, they do have a little storage area, or I guess these are just covers. 
but they come off easy enough if you needed to put something in there uh, I know in my old tractor uh, this is where I kept my stick uh, to move the backhoe uh, when I was sitting in the on the backhoe seat this is where I put my pedal stick um, I haven't had to use that with this one because you can pretty much walk this tractor with the backhoe this is a review of the Massey Ferguson GC1720 with a CB65 backhoe and a DL95 front end loader. I also have some other attachments uh, that work with any tractors that are three point that I'll go over in this video. The hydrostatic controls are over on your right side. Um, it's really simple. Forwards, reverse. Um, it does really well. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, especially you know with your brake over on your left hand side um, you really don't need the brake a whole lot unless you're on hills and you need to be careful if you are on hills that you are using the brake um, and not putting any undue stress on the hydrostatic transmission these are some of the implements that I got with the tractor uh, I got a small 40 inch bush hog uh, no problems uh, lifting it attaching it um, it's small enough to where you can kind of manhandle it and get it on the tractor really easy uh, and it does a real good job about keeping uh, the small property that I have here. Uh, usually I only use it around the edges of the property where kind of the brushes grow up, but it works really well uh, behind the Massey. I got this blade used. Um, it is a six foot blade. Uh, I'd heard some recommendations that that may be a little too big for the, uh, the GC1720. Uh, um, I haven't had any issues with it. You can flip it around uh, and actually cut and you know push dirt over the mold board uh, i haven't had any problems uh, with uh, keeping the driveway graded um, generally though i do use this back blading um, it will spin around uh, i did have to make a little modification to the pin setup uh, and move those forward just a little bit so i could actually spin the blade around but it works just fine uh, one thing i really like about this blade you can't do a lot of offset with a small tractor um, but if you notice the uh, the little rail system you can actually unbolt and you can change change the angle there but typically I use it to actually offset the tractor to the ditching uh, and it cut uh, a really nice looking ditch in my driveway I picked up this small box blade uh, when I purchased the tractor uh, it does a really good job uh, it will pull a full box full of uh, debris or dirt uh, without any issues um, really the only thing I didn't like about it there's no position to actually take the brakes all the way up um, it's generally not a problem if you adjust your top link and get the back rear blade and get the box blade really level. Um, they just barely scratch the surface. Um, but I do find myself, especially in finish work, actually taking those all the way off and setting them to the side. Uh, you can flip them over, um, but I'm not a real big fan of having sharp objects pointed up at you. 